Coming up on WUFT's First Step 5, a disaster declaration for 16 Florida counties after the impacts of Hurricane Helene, why Alachua County was not included. Plus, continued relief efforts in Newberry, where you can go if you need a hot meal. And something new is brewing in the tropics. The UF weather team is tracking the chances of impacts close to home. First Step 5 starts now. First at five, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Recovery efforts are in full swing across North Central Florida in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. This is First at Five, I'm Juan Carlos Chaui. And I'm Mar Rochez, thank you for joining us. Tonight, we begin the team coverage across our area as communities work to rebuild. On Monday, Governor Ron DeSantis issued a disaster declaration for 16 Florida counties, including many here in North Central Florida. Our Sofia Mendez is live in Gainesville explaining why Alachua County was not included. Alachua County is not one of the areas that will receive federal funding after Hurricane Helene hit through. Leaders in the county believe there has been damage to get the extra help. They're working to build a case by using damage like the one here at Norman Hall to make case on why Alachua County deserves it. The immediate effects of the hurricane have passed, but the long-term rehabilitation efforts will continue. County officials claim that major damage occurred in a number of communities, ranging from a collapsed tree on a playground to almost 3,000 broken power lines to this day and four destroyed homes. Director of Emergency Management for Alachua County, Jen Grice, tracks the damage calls from Hurricane Helene to make a case for the county's need for a disaster declaration. We have been significantly impacted here in Alachua County. Uh, our damage assessment teams began their assessments yesterday and just in the uh, few short hours that they've been doing assessments, we already have four destroyed homes and 27 homes with major damage. Grice goes on to say more damaged homes will be discovered as the county continues to assess damages. We've really been pushing here in Alachua County for residents to submit their damages so that we have uh, as many numbers as possible to, to tell the state and FEMA to, to meet that threshold to get that assistance turned on. In contrast, Taylor County is one of the counties that has been declared a disaster area. Helene made landfall there with maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour as the county was under a mandatory evacuation order. As of right now, more than 5,000 people are still with no power. If Alachua County is declared for individual assistance, they will open disaster recovery centers and have financial assistance for residents. We will keep you posted if and when these declarations are ever made. Reporting live from Norman Hall, Sofia Mendez, WFT News. The city of Gainesville is providing instructions to help residents get debris left by Hurricane Helene picked up. City officials say it will take some time to fully remove all debris from residential areas, but following the set of guidelines will help make the process quicker. You can place branches weighing up to 40 pounds on the curb to be picked up. You should not block any sidewalks, streets, or mailboxes. If you use a tree service contractor, they say you should haul off any debris left behind. For a full list of instructions, visit WUFT.org. Governor Ron DeSantis made an appearance today at Horseshoe Beach. He spoke about the efforts being made to help the community recover from the storm. Aerial footage taken Friday shows the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Helene devastation. DeSantis declared Horseshoe Beach as one of the areas to receive money from the Florida Disaster Fund. He says the state also has set up a resource center to address the needs of the community. We've seen major damage inflicted on homes as well as on businesses. And so the state, in response to that, has set up a multi-agency resource center, MARC, here in your community. Resources are provided by the Division of Emergency Management, the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, the Department of Children and Family, and more. DeSantis also announced all restaurant owners with destroyed infrastructure can open up mobile trucks. He says this is to help the local economy get back on its feet. We're taking a live look now outside on our DOT cams. This is over I-75 near Newberry Road. Looks like a cloudy day as we prepare for potential rain later this week. UF forecaster Matthew Clark is looking at when we can expect to see rainfall. Yeah, those cloudy skies are going to kind of last as we head into this weekend. And we do have an area of interest right in the same region that Helene formed. However, a lot of the models don't seem to have it becoming nearly as strong as Helene, maybe not even a storm at all. However, that moisture is expected to move its way north and then to the northeast. So we could be seeing some rainfall this weekend into Friday and into next 
part. So early next week, campus cam right now, kind of hazy out right now, a couple blue skies, 86 degrees right now, but it feels like 91. We're feeling a little bit warmer right now just because of those higher dew points. That's going to kind of stick around as we head into this weekend. Storm tracker tracking a few storms south of us here. The villages um, Orlando seeing a couple passing thunderstorms, but for the most part, all is quiet here. Those rain chances are going to start to drop as we head into the overnight hours with temperatures going to be in the mid 70s. It's going to be another warm and humid night as we head into our Wednesday morning. Thanks, Matthew. And five days after Hurricane Helene made landfall, people are still feeling the effects. WUFT reporter Tanya Fedak shows how Lake City is helping its residents. I'm outside the Richardson Community Center, which is one of the many distribution centers Columbia County has set up for residents still dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Jessica Daniels is just one of the many in need after Hurricane Helene. The thoughts that flow through her mind? Endless. Uh, just constant worry. How am I going to fill this tank? What happens if the food runs out? Five days after the Category 4, her worries became her reality. And now I'm at that realization, the food is going to spoil. And it's like, well, what do you do? You know, I, I have no help. She decided to come to one of the distribution locations set up by the Columbia County Emergency Operations Center. Director Shane Morgan says this is one of the largest efforts. This is the largest distribution site that we've done to this point and a number of our residents have taken advantage and uh, been able to go out and get the supplies that they need as we enter into the recovery phase that comes with Hurricane Helene. As Jessica takes on the road to recovery, she hopes those who the storm affected remember a few things. Be a human. If you see the need for help, help them. Don't be afraid to ask for help. These shelters offer bathroom, laundry, and shower services 24-7, and from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., they also give out boxed water, ready-to-eat meals, snacks, and ice. Tanya Fedak, WUFT News. In Bradford County, local business leaders are setting up a collection site at Mosley Tire for immediately needed supplies for people in the Steenhatchee area of Taylor County. The supplies can be dropped off anytime prior to delivery sometime this weekend. Suggested items include cleaning supplies, non-perishable foods, water, and hygiene products. As always, monetary donations can be made to the Bradford Sheriff Charitable Foundation or the American Red Cross Hurricane Helene Recovery Fund. Marion County deputies are lending a hand to Lafayette County, which was devastated by Hurricane Helene. Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods says they're honored to be, to be able to help the residents of Lafayette County. Deputies assisted with debris removal, removing trees from homes and using tractors and other equipment. For Columbia County residents also facing food insecurity after the hurricane, you could pick up hot dinners later tonight. The Lake City Christ Central Church is serving meals starting at 630. Residents can get up to eight meals per car while supplies last. Levy County has resources available and procedures laid out for residents dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Now take a look at your screen. Point of distribution sites are listed along there with their address and what each location has to offer. Services provided include showers, laundry, meals ready to eat, and restrooms. These sites are available from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. Also, debris should be placed outside on the curb without blocking the roadway or storm drains. If you don't have a place to put debris, you can place it on the edge of your property before the curb. If you place it on the sidewalk or near your property, it will not be picked up. With that said, you could stay up to date on the latest recovery efforts from Hurricane Helene across North Central Florida on WUFT.org. We'll have information about debris removal, weather forecasts, and community recovery. A new law cracking down on homeless encampment takes effect today. WUFT's Jessica Nitty explains how the legislation could reshape Gainesville's approach towards homelessness. I'm standing here right next to Grace Marketplace, where homeless encampments once lined the street. Starting today, a new law in Gainesville prohibits people from sleeping and camping on city streets, sidewalks, and parks. In February, Gainesville Police Department enforced a gentle removal of encampments. It was a move that stirred debate on how to address homelessness within the city. 
But now a new Florida law in effect today requires cities to take more action against camping or sleeping in public areas and allows the setup of temporary shelters. City Commissioner Brian Eastman is concerned the law puts a Band-Aid on the problem. It doesn't solve the mental health issues of this. It doesn't solve the substance abuse issues of this. All it, all it is is just moving people along from point A to point B in some kind of game of whack-a-mole. Additionally, Eastman says the law puts pressure on local government resources without any state funding to back it. Alachua County Sheriff's Public Information Officer Arthur Forgey feels the city and county work well together in addressing the issue. I think we're actually fairly lucky here. We have a, a good support network with Grace, uh, the St. Francis House, different, different uh, housing areas, uh, the mobile paramedics that go around. Uh, Local shelters and city officials are bracing for the increased demand this new law will likely bring. Meanwhile, Gainesville and Alachua County seek long-term solutions for homelessness. In Gainesville, Jessica Nitty, WUFT News. Final preparations are underway in New York for tonight's vice presidential debate. Coming up on First at Five, how candidates are getting ready for their first face-off before Election Day. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Mercy chefs at Destiny Community Church in Newberry are feeding both body and soul, providing free meals to the community. WUFT Music and tacos, singing with cantaloupes, along with dancing to the beat. It's an assembly suited to fit the community's hurricane relief needs. So some people have lost everything, and without any power, your roof has been blown off. You don't have the ability to cook and nourish your family. Raymond LeBlanc volunteers through Destiny Community Church to distribute food to those who are still without many basic needs. Being able to provide that nutrition in that moment of normalcy in the time of tragedy is our impact here. Lynn McCray Post also wanted to help. The most wonderful people um, just welcome you, know, you in. Um, I love the, the fast pace, things get done, it's very organized from the chefs all the way to the volunteers. We've had uh, absolutely wonderful volunteers from all over the state of Florida. They know the road to recovery may be one with challenges along the way, but they hope this spirit of cheer will help those as they continue to make it day to day. That was Bredesha Robinson reporting. Mercy Chefs is making their way around the region, continuing to help those in need. They are even in Asheville, North Carolina right now, helping the communities there that have been washed away by Helene. In other news, Alachua County Commissioners discuss updates to an ordinance that increases enforcement of school zone speed limits. Here are some of the highlights from today's meeting. First, they plan to slowly roll the ordinance in schools because commissioners want to be cautious with allocating resources. They set a six-month period to make a progress report to get an idea of how the enforcement will work. Next, a public awareness campaign. Commissioners want to proceed with advertising the ordinance. Also, commissioners consider strategies to emphasize addressing safety rather than creating revenue. The revenue that they do make could be used to create sidewalks, crosswalk lights, and more improvements to schools we could dedicate that funding to be able to do something that directly addresses the same issue that we're trying to achieve. I mean, ideally it would be revenue neutral. The ordinance is expected to be implemented in spring of 2025. In just a few hours, vice presidential candidates J.D. Vance and Tim Walls will meet in New York for the vice presidential debate. This is the first and likely only meeting between the hopeful VP candidates before election night. Presidential candidates former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are not expected to face off again before Election Day. This all comes as candidates work to address the damage from Hurricane Helene last week. The VP debate is scheduled to start at 9 p.m. on CBS News. We're tracking another area of interest in the Western Caribbean, and I'll have more on what we can expect for our Tuesday night. Coming up next. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Currently tracking another area of interest in the Western Caribbean, right where Helene formed actually. This one does have a 40% chance to form over the next seven days, and it's expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico and possibly become a storm, possibly as we head into this weekend and early into next week. I want to glance at one of the models that we're seeing. This is the American GFS model. A lot of the moisture down here in the Western Caribbean is expected to move its way up as we head into Friday and into this weekend. And as we head into early next week, this is Tuesday of next week, so about a week from today, we have a broad area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico, which suggests of a weak storm or a tropical depression. And even if this does become a name storm,
platform. I don't expect it to become too much of an issue. However, as it becomes, as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico and strengthens, we could see some rain early next week and into next later next week. Tropics are also starting to heat up. Here we have Tropical Storm Kirk expected to strengthen and head off into the Atlantic and another area of invest behind Kirk also expected to strengthen and head off into the Atlantic. So just a few takeaways. There is only a 40% chance of a name storm in the Gulf next week. Could be a broad area of low pressure, but is expected to bring some rain to our area regardless this weekend and early into next week. But I want to bring it back to our place though here in Gainesville. Campus cam a little bit hazy outside. Some blue skies and overhead clouds. 86 degrees. Feels like 91 right now hazy looking out west right now it's feeling a little bit warmer because of those dew points got a few storms to the south in orlando and spring hill st leo also seeing some storms all is really quiet on in our area uh, dixie and taylor county seeing a few scattered showers moving on to there parts of the area future cast a couple storms could be likely to the east of 75 as we head into tuesday night and into the tuesday night overnight hours expected to pretty much just subside into wednesday morning going to be really humid though temperatures 87 degrees in gainesville 88 in ocala and 86 up in stark feeling a lot toastier right now 95 in ocala 100 in daytona and 97 in Placa. we are seeing that because of the higher dew points a lot of moisture in the atmosphere making us feel a lot warmer temperature is going to drop off into the mid 70s as we head into tonight we're really going to be feeling that just because of those warm and muggy temperatures that we're seeing as we head into this week though and into this weekend we could see a slight relief from those temperatures temperatures reaching down into the upper to the lower 80s and those rain chances also going to increase as we head into this weekend because of a possible storm as the calendar flips over to a new month the clock continues to tick on the return of florida gators basketball the uf men's team was back in the o-dome for open practice earlier this afternoon we'll have more on the main takeaways from today's action after the break you're watching WUFT TV News. I'm Jack Meyer here with everything you need to know about what's going on in the wide world of sports today. We're starting off at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center, where the Florida Gators men's basketball team is already back for practice and looking better than ever before. Coming off a breakthrough campaign that saw the Gators finish with their best win loss record since 2017, Florida still seemingly has nowhere to go but up. UF has numerous key contributors such as guards Walter Clayton Jr. and Will Richard set to return for the upcoming season alongside a loaded transfer portal class. Florida guard Denzel Aberdeen shared his enthusiasm for what the Gators should have in store for the new year. I just think we're all more locked in this year. Like knowing that we got knocked off first round, that's not what we wanted to do. We want to go uh, further than uh, what we did last year. So I think we're all more just locked in to key details like defensively, offensively. Uh, pushing the pace more and then just playing defense harder, rebounding. And I think once we get all this together during practices for this next month, and I think in November we'll be, we'll be pretty strong, coming out pretty strong. Florida will kick off the new season in the Jacksonville Sports Foundation Invitational against USF on November 4th. Heading on over to Florida Volleyball, the Gators fell three spots in the latest AVCA Division I rankings. This comes after UF dropped its SEC opener against the Kentucky Wildcats this past weekend. The now number 18 Gators previously defeated the Oklahoma Sooners on the road to open up their conference slate last Thursday. Florida will have some time off this week before returning to the hardwood this coming Sunday. UF will return to action at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center this weekend to host the number seven Texas Longhorns. Staying put in the world of volleyball tonight is chock full of high school action across North Florida as well. Leading off tonight, the Bell Bulldogs are set to travel to Mayo to take on the Lafayette Hornets at 6 p.m. Later in the evening, the Newberry Panthers will play host to the Dixie County Bears with first point 6 for 6 for 30 p.m. Finally, the Williston Red Devils will face off against the Bronson Eagles. That match will start at 7 p.m. Now let's flip over from the hardwood to the gridiron as the Florida Gators football team is gearing up for an interstate showdown with the UCF Knights this weekend. Coming off a bye week, Florida will look to pick up where it left off from a dominant win over Mississippi State two weeks ago. This time, however, the Gators will be hard pressed in facing a blossoming UCF squad with one of the top rushing attacks in the country. Nevertheless, UF quarterback Graham Mertz has made it clear that the team will be ready for whatever comes its way this weekend. Uh, they're talented. They got a good front. Secondary's fast. They play fast uh, and, they, and they play with each other. So uh, I think the biggest thing when you look at a defense is if the front and the coverage uh, really play off each other. So they do a good job of that. And it'll be, it's a fun game to prep for. Kickoff between the Gators and the Knights is currently set for 7.45 p.m. And finally, MLB legend Pete Rose passed away at the age of 83 years old on Monday. 
Rose was a three-time World Series champion who holds the MLB all-time record for career hits, but he has been controversially excluded from the Baseball Hall of Fame after admitting to gambling on his own games throughout his career. Very sad to hear that, but thank you, Jack. And now in some other good news from Alachua County Fire Rescue, a calf was saved after falling into a sinkhole. That's right. Fire rescue teams were dispatched to a sinkhole in Archer after receiving reports that a calf had fallen in. The sinkhole was nearly 20 feet deep. Crews were able to save the calf from the hole with no injuries to calf or crew. Thank gosh. I mean, nobody's hurt and the calf is still yeah. adorable and just, wow, that's just like... It's good to see a story with an actual happy ending on here yeah, after just sure. like all the depressing stuff every now and then. No, I completely <laughs> agree. What do you think, JC? No, I gotta say, I'm just happy to see the calf is okay. It's just a precious animal, but now we're running out of time. So before we go, let's get one last good look at the weather. So there is that area of development that we are looking at in the Western Caribbean that does have a 40% chance right now. We could see effects from that as we head into the weekend. That's why those rain chances are elevated on our Saturday through our Monday. If it does become a storm, it would be likely a weekend storm and we're just hoping it doesn't become a storm. We're going to be keeping an eye on it though. It does not hurt to be prepared. Those temperatures are going to drop this weekend though because of the rain. So at least that is some good news. We're getting a little bit of a break from the heat. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you for joining us, too. We're back here tomorrow for another edition of First at Five. But your North Central Florida news is always on at WUFT.org and on all of our social media platforms. Please have a good night.